Akarja, I now have the great privilege to introduce to you somebody who's not only been a great uh, advocate and champion for the people of Derry, but has been a huge credit to our local party structures here in the city and of course across the island. You will know Alicia McCallia not only as the MP for FOIL, but somebody who gives up so much of her time as an advocate for investment for this city and champion the downtrodden and the rights of those in need of equality going forward here in the city of Derry. Can you please give a big bullet bus to Alicia McCallion? viewers who are joining us across the country watching on RTE television and those who are watching across the globe on live feeds. This has been an amazing Ardesh at a very historic time for our country. We've had excellent positive debates and I want to commend all of the delegates and mem members and visitors. What other party on this island could organize such a huge inspirational event while on the countdown to a general election in the 26 counties, four by-elections in coming weeks, as well as a mighty Westminster election in December. I want to take this opportunity to send best wishes to all of our election candidates and their teams in the days and weeks ahead. It is now my great honour and privilege to introduce our next and final speaker to bring this year's Ardesh to a close here in the amazing city of Derry. A comrade, a visionary leader, my friend, and a great friend of Derry. It is now my pleasure to welcome onto the stage for the presidential address, our leader, Uchtaron Sinn Féin, Mary Lou MacDonald. Ta falshiro vile quig dera, daridesh hin fein. Tomage eg buga araig quig an tauhi. Welcome to Derry, the birthplace of civil rights, capital of the Northwest, a city that has seen conflict and division, a city that has led from the front, building peace and unity, the hometown of Martin McGuinness. Never forgotten, always inspiring us. Home also to our very own Derry girl, Alicia McCallion, MP. <laughs> A voice for all the people of Foyle, the strongest voice to represent the people of Foyle. Goramai Guth Alicia Iskanairi Lat. Greetings to our friends throughout the world and welcome to our international guests and dignitaries. We send love to our friend and leader, Rita O'Hare. <laughs> Rita will soon leave her role in the US having done Trojan work for the Republican cause for 20 years there, but fear not. Rita will return home to help us build the new Ireland she has dedicated her life to. So, you know, Republicans don't retire, so you can be absolutely certain that Rita will not be retiring. No. To struggling people, to the people of Palestine, to the people of Catalonia, we restate again our solidarity with you. We look forward, we look forward to the day when our nations together will enjoy freedom, independence and unity and that day is coming. We also send solidarity to, to our friend John Downey.
John, John is a supporter of the peace process. John shouldn't be in jail. John should be at home with his family in Donegal. <laughs> Friends, we stand on the threshold of a new decade, a decade of opportunity, an opportunity to turn the page, to write a new chapter. The last decade was a lost decade, dominated by the destructive politics of austerity, of cuts and of division. People were the collateral damage in the economic collapse. So the rich got richer and the people picked up the tab. The coming decade has to be different. The people must take centre stage and our progress must not be measured by how well the few are doing, but rather by how you, the many, are getting on. Measured by our determination to win the race against climate change, by our success in achieving Irish unity. I believe we have the talent and the resources to redefine Ireland, but to do this, things must change. The old ways haven't worked. The old ways have failed you and your family. The old ways have fueled economic uncertainty and an environmental emergency. The old ways have held people back. So we must make sure that these old ways, the broken politics and the narrow thinking, don't rob us of the promise of the next decade. Ireland's future will be defined by economic equality, by social justice and climate justice. And let the message go loud and clear to government buildings and to number 10 Downing Street that this new decade is the one in which we will finally end partition to achieve a new united Ireland. Cohamid Buga Erai gonna Aumata in Imaha, Agus Ave Ekfekant Erin Aumatala Chakt, Cohamid Suki a Kruhu in a will Gok Illa Seranak, Agus Chowluk Bio, Idir at all Kohram, Shin on Kino Suki, at Hasti and O Fublakti a Kruhu. To everyone watching this evening who hasn't enjoyed any economic recovery yet, who pays a second mortgage in childcare fees, who are ripped off with rents, to you who can't afford a mortgage, to carers, to citizens with disabilities and your families, let me say this. You are entitled to a good life, a full life that you can afford. Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have shortchanged you. You deserve a new deal a better deal to tackle the crushing cost of living, to raise your income and to build an equal and a prosperous society that serves you and your family. Sinn Féin offers a new deal, an all-Ireland deal that gives workers and families a break. So let me share with you some of the common sense principles and solutions that we would deliver. A fair day's pay for a fair day's work. Sinn Féin will make the living wage the law. We want secure work. We want secure work, workers' rights and trade union rights protected in law. We want our taxation system to be fair and progressive. That means ending tax holidays for banks, by the way. And just... And just as you have the right to decent work, so too you have the right to retire on a state pension at the age of 65. 65 year olds should not be sent to stand in the dole queue. These measures, <laughs> th these measures will support workers and families, but also 
boost industrial productivity and social prosperity. A home, a secure roof over your head. If we're serious about solving the housing crisis, we need to get back to build public housing led by councils and to increase the supply of affordable homes. Now, this is something that will never be delivered by Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael because their policies are about developers and landlords making profits. In Cabra, where I live, we still enjoy the legacy of housing schemes from the 1930s and 40s. And if it could be done then, well, it certainly can be done now. In previous generations... In previous generations, a family with one income could buy their own home. Today, families with two incomes only dream of home ownership, and young people feel that they have no chance. My commitment to you is that Sinn Féin will deliver the largest public housing building program that Ireland has ever seen. We will, also, we will also increase the supply of affordable homes, and by affordable, I mean affordable to average workers. Over the last five years, rents have skyrocketed. Renters need a break and security, so we will cut rents. We will reduce rents by up to €1,500 Euros a year through a tax relief and a three-year rent freeze. And friends, it is time to stop the scandal of tenant evictions into homelessness. It's time to stop the scandal of children and families calling B&Bs home. <laughs> Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are bad for your health. We, we have an emergency in our hospitals. This year, so far, 100,000 people have suffered the indignity of lying on a trolley. Tory austerity is really bad for your health. Across Ireland, we have a crisis in mental health services. But health care is a right. And that means public investment. It means more beds. It means more staff. It means a real commitment to public health services. Our system is broken. We need an Irish National Health Service. That is the future. I want us to send a message of support to the striking nurses here in the North. Just like the nurses in the South, these are the people who will defend our public health services and Sinn Féin stands with them. It's time to make childcare a public service. Childcare can mean stress for families, securing a place, the cost of making your decision to go out to work, the worry when failings in the system are exposed. I was that parent when my children were younger and I want to change the system for you. We currently have the worst of all worlds. Childcare workers are low paid, their employment is insecure and yet the fees rise higher and higher. So it's time for the big step forward. Secondary education wasn't a public service until 50 years ago. And then, within a decade, participation rates doubled. So we need a similar bold move in childcare. This would slash costs for parents and ensure that childcare workers have decent pay and job security. Our children have the right to an education, a free education. Sinn Féin has shown how school budgets can be increased, 
how books and school meals can be provided for and how these voluntary contributions that aren't really voluntary can be eliminated. This decade, friends, must see the delivery of truly free education from the first day of school to graduation. And that means scrapping third level fees. Is is Thulon Ulwar and Taru Eroja than Gluen Shaw? Ni more do in plan a curl a kela inish, ni fager ain will a vet own. A green new deal for Ireland will be at the centre of our work. Policies to deal with the climate crisis, policies to build the economy of tomorrow that work for the people and for the planet. I believe we need to change how we talk about climate policies because too often the focus is on cost and not investment, on the individual and not the system. A Green New Deal for Ireland means zero emissions. It means a just transition. It means sustainable jobs and state investment in infrastructure and skills. And anyone who lives in the Northwest, or all of us who have traveled to Derry this weekend, know that we need to revolutionize our public transport and our infrastructure. So in the coming weeks, Sinn Féin will publish radical proposals on this on the watch of David Cullinan, TD, and Quiva Archibald, MLA. Corrige, the days of partition are numbered. Change is in the air. Brexit has changed everything. Many people, for the first time, are now considering their future in a united Ireland. The Irish government and all who say that now is not the time to speak of unity are wrong. A referendum on unity will happen, as set out in the Good Friday Agreement. It's not a question of if, but a question of when. Dainan era intaha keel. Isay on rod kyart le dainav. Agus kahamaj ulvu kun gudar loishe. Kahi on upper shin tosu anish. Now is the time to prepare. The Irish government must convene an all-Ireland forum to map the transition to a united Ireland, to involve all our people, to plan for our economy and our public services. And then the referendum must happen. In the next five years, let the people have their say. Sinn Féin's New Deal represents an ambitious agenda based on common sense. It's progressive and modern, and above all, it's achievable. It's a deal for everybody who calls Ireland home. Nobody will be excluded. I pledge that no community will ever be scapegoated for the failures of those in power, no matter the color of your skin, no matter your gender, your sexual orientation, no matter where you come from and no matter where you live. So this will be our Ireland and there is no contradiction between working for Irish unity and seeking the restoration of the northern institutions. Three years on, we have no assembly and no executive. This is unsustainable. There is an immediate challenge to restore government in the North, to bring accountable government for all the people, a government of respect and equality, leaving discrimination and exclusion to the past. We are ready to do business. Sinn Féin has never been the obstacle to power sharing or good government or doing a deal. 
So I challenge the DUP and both governments to step forward, to resolve the issues and get government back in action. And we don't need a drawn out talks process. The issues have been very well rehearsed. We need a good faith, purposeful engagement by political unionism. And Sinn Féin negotiators stand ready. In Dublin, those who lament the absence of Sinn Féin from government in the north are very, very determined to keep us out of government in the south. You see, you see we're not part of their cosy club that has run things for almost a century. These parties align themselves with the golden circles the banks, the landlords, the vulture funds. They are the reason why governments come and governments go, but the old problems remain. And there are some who believe that we should never talk to other parties about government, and those fears are understandable. But I believe the housing crisis will only be solved with Sinn Féin in government. I believe we'll only see a proper health service and a fair and just economy with Sinn Féin in government. So following the general election, we will have a choice to make, not about being in government for the sake of it, but about how we best implement our policies, our solutions. And in arriving at this decision, we should be guided not by our distrust of other parties, but by our confidence in Republicans. So after the election, we will talk and we will listen. Our preference is for a left-led government. So let the other parties... <laughs> so let the other parties tell us if they are willing to implement a Republican programme for government. And if we have the chance to deliver housing and health care, to stand up for people and deliver a fair deal for families, to deliver on Irish unity, then that is the only basis on which Sinn Féin would enter government. On November the 29th, by-elections will be held in Cork, in Wexford, and in Dublin, the home of Sam Maguire. <laughs> and this, friends, is an opportunity to pass judgment on the Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil coalition government. And make mo no mistake, that's what it is. Week in, week out, Fianna Fáil TDs line up to back Fine Gael. Leo Varadkar, Simon Harris, Owen Murphy lead one of the most out-of-touch governments this state has ever seen. They, they haven't a clue about the reality of towns and villages in rural Ireland struggling to survive. They haven't a clue of what it's like for working families afraid that their landlord is going to sell their home. They haven't a clue about parents fighting for access to services for a child with special needs. So if you are tired of the north side of Cork being left behind, then vote for Thomas Gould. He'll stand up for you and he'll certainly get things done. If you live in Clondalkin or Lucan, in Swords or Rush, and you want decent housing and health care, well then vote for Mark Ward in Dublin Midwest. <laughs> and for Anne Graves in Dublin, Fingal. <laughs> if you live in Wexford and you are alarmed by the lack of mental health services, angry that the second regional cath lab hasn't been delivered, 
Well, then vote for Johnny Mythen. <laughs> On the 12th of December, we face a defining Westminster election. We stand on a strong anti-Brexit platform. The DUP as architects and champions of Brexit. So there's the clear choice and the people will have to call it. Between the future and the past, between Sinn Féin and May Féin, the people of North Belfast will have to call it between John Finucane and Nigel Dodds. Some claim that they'll enter Westminster to stop Brexit. Now those making this claim need to give themselves a shake because no Irish elected representative can stop Brexit. That's the fact. So rather than indulging in the politics of delusion and blind alleys, Irish elected representatives must act to protect Irish interests where it matters. Far from the chaos of Westminster, in the Dáil, in the Shannad, in the European Parliament, on Capitol Hill. That's what Sinn Féin has done. No, no Irish Republican would swear an oath to the Crown. And Fine Gael feel differently. They have very strong views on entering Westminster. Mind you, not strong enough to come up here and contest the elections. <laughs> Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have abstained from the North for almost a hundred years. Yeah. And we, and we take no lecture from those parties who looked the other way, who opted out and who abandoned this part of Ireland. of opportunity. The past was for those who seek to divide. The future is for those of us who seek to unite. So the our old guard can have yesterday, but tomorrow is ours. The next, the next stage of our struggle beckons. The road to unity runs through it. The road to economic equality runs through it, friends. The road to the Republic runs through it. And it's a road that we will walk together. Confident, resilient, determined, always looking to tomorrow, always working hard in our communities, always standing up for people. That is the Sinn Féin way and that will never, ever change. Viewers, people of Ireland, join us in shaping and defining Ireland's future. This is the decade in which we will deliver this new Ireland, in which we will unite our country. This is the decade in which we will win the Republic. Eraiglin le Kayla, Eraiglin le Sinn Féin, Gurumila Mahagwev.
button there. Will you give a very warm welcome to another Derry girl? A very wonderful Derry young woman who happens to be the granddaughter of the very wonderful Martin McGuinness. Welcome, Cara. And please be right and upstanding for Aaron Nevin. She Fue 